I'm building a Lego navigation system for my car, as I desperately need one if I want to drive anywhere, really. Because technology is changing so rapidly these days that a car that's not even 10 years old can already feel obsolete. That's exactly the case with my car. The infotainment system is slow, unresponsive, and above all, it costs a fortune to keep it updated. So I need an alternative. The most obvious option might be a phone mount, since everyone already has a phone and it's the most logical and simply best option for navigation. However, I consider many mounts to be of poor quality, they look out of place, and most importantly, they can obscure the driver's view. The next option would be a third-party car display, but most of them don't look very elegant either, especially considering their price. So that leaves me with no choice but to build something myself. There is this large empty spot on my dashboard above this little ridge, and it seems like the perfect spot to place a phone. So with that idea in mind, I got to work. When we first got this car, we simply used the built-in navigation system. But as the years went by, the built-in maps got outdated, and we figured we would like to get them updated. Such an update is released twice a year, but the cost of one of those is a shocking 130 euros, which is just ridiculous in my eyes. I built this dock for my phone and it fits nicely, but while there is this helpful ridge, I do still need to find a way to secure the dock in place. These vents seem like the most obvious areas to secure the dock to, so I reckon I can place an L-shaped brick inside there and then lock it in place by turning the vent orientation like this. I believe that using your phone is the most future-proof way of navigating, but I think the experience can be a lot better than those ugly and clumsy phone clamps. I've seen several people turning an iPad into a car display, but I feel a phone is a more logical choice, as I don't always have an iPad with me and I definitely don't feel like leaving one in a car at all times. And there it is, the first iteration of the LEGO car dock. At first I thought it might snap off or break into pieces at some point, but instead I ended up using this design for about a year, and I never had a single issue with its solidity. However, there was one major drawback to this design. I couldn't charge my phone while it was in the dock. And in a few weeks, I had a road trip throughout the whole of Europe planned, where navigation is essential, and my phone would be in this dock non-stop. So I think it's clear, I need a way to charge my phone, preferably with an automated mechanism. My plan is to guide a cable into the phone using a Bluetooth motor. But we need to reduce the size of this mechanism, because anything thicker than 3 studs won't fit on the ridge of my car's dashboard. Do you know that sinking feeling when you already had a bad day and then there's this one more thing that beats it all? Well, me dropping my phone was exactly that. Thankfully, it still worked fine, and I looked into having the screen repaired, but that would have cost more than my phone is worth. So I guess you'll get to enjoy this unique looking phone for the rest of the video. Another unique thing about my phone is that it does not support wireless charging, which was about to make this project a lot more difficult than I had initially expected. I built this mechanism that converts rotary motion into linear motion. But once I tried it with the phone in place, I noticed that plugging the cable into the phone required a lot more force than I had anticipated. In an attempt to fix this, I strengthened the entire structure of the dock, but this made no difference whatsoever. I figured it might just be the specific cable that I was using, so I tested every USB-C cable I could find, but in the end I only found two that were just slightly better, but they were either way too short or way too long. So I persisted onwards with the original cable, and I reckon that if I just place the motor into the mechanism, I might just start to find a solution. But instead I immediately stumbled upon yet another issue. I'm using a non-official LEGO motor, since they are significantly smaller compared to the official LEGO ones. However, the axle hole on this one apparently is slightly less deep than the official depth, and as a result the axle sticks out on the other side of the gear that's connected, which then sabotages my whole mechanism. I had to get radical with this one. I got some sanding paper and set on sanding down the axle until it would eventually fit. Yeah, this might not be my proudest moment in LEGO building, as it felt rather illegal, but 
hey, in the end, it did completely solve my problem. And that's what matters, I guess. And with that, I was able to finish the automated phone dock. Or part of it, at least, because I still need to figure out the automation bit. I attach this yellow Technic piece to calibrate the motor by checking if the gear turns exactly 180 degrees every run. But I soon realized that something called resistance should also be taken into consideration. And with that, my entire calibration could directly be thrown into the bin. But due to the lack of code blocks in the app and the fact that the motor wouldn't work properly unless it was at maximal RPM, I opted for a different approach. A simple switch at maximum power to ensure that the cable gets plugged into the phone. Then I did something rather cool to automate it all, because I built a touch macro on my phone to open the app, connect to the motor via Bluetooth, and then shortly let the motor rotate so that it plugs the cable into my phone. Then I set this touch macro to play automatically whenever my phone is in driving mode, which is activated by itself whenever I get into the car. Now this is a big moment. Will everything work as intended when I start the car? Just like I hoped, the touch macro started doing its job immediately. And it actually worked brilliantly on the first try. It's so magical to see the phone just doing exactly what you want it to do without you ever touching the screen. And on the topic of not touching the display, I obviously want this thing to be safe to use while driving. So I set up shortcuts for the only two apps I need while traveling, being Spotify and Google Maps. This way, I can easily access both apps with a simple swipe from the side, and then it's either up or down. If I want to have both at the same time, then a middle swipe opens split screen view. Although this automated system initially seemed like the perfect solution, my verdict considerably changed after using it for a week. Just like the weather, this supposedly improved iteration was looking rather dreadful. First up, you always had to have the battery pack charged and switched on before you could start the car and drive off. Furthermore, the motors made the plugging in and out of the charging cable quite unreliable, as it sometimes wouldn't plug in completely or disconnect properly. It's not charging. Resulting in the inconvenience of struggling to get my phone out after a drive. And then there was the fact that you had to wait what felt like forever for the touch macro to run, which simply wasn't that convenient. And lastly, it just didn't look that good, and it wasn't particularly robust either. I felt it would be best to abandon the idea of something electronically driven. So I started from scratch all over again, and set out to make something that was flawless. And I was in desperate need of such a thing, because in one week from now, I was going on my road trip throughout Europe. And with the lack of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, a proper phone dock would be the key requirement for a successful road trip. I think technology in cars should mostly be separated from the car itself. Because technology changes so fast that a car becomes glued to the past because of its infotainment system. And before you know it, your head unit starts lagging or stops getting software updates. As a result, cars can age so quickly nowadays. My car is the perfect example. It is currently only 9 years old, but the infotainment system is simply horrible. Even the simplest task of adjusting the volume is laggy. However, the shocking truth is that the systems in some brand new cars aren't that much faster. Therefore, I think it would be wise to start using phones as infotainment displays. Since everyone already has a phone, and compared to a car's built-in system, it is so much easier and cheaper to upgrade when it eventually becomes obsolete. And here is the third iteration of the LEGO car dock. But first, a few more modifications. One of those was changing all off-color pieces to black counterparts. And since I was doing this build without ordering new pieces, it occasionally was quite challenging to find the parts I intended to use. When installing it in the car, I ran into two more issues. First, I couldn't reach the right side air vent to lock the dock in place, because I closed off the entire back wall. And secondly, I felt the whole thing just looked rather big and chunky, especially when compared to the first iteration. And sure, some aesthetics must be sacrificed for a functioning mechanism, but this is borderline ugly. Now that's a lot better. Now it was time for the ultimate test. 
Could this phone dock survive a two week long road trip? Let's start with the positives. The dock did an incredible job of keeping the phone secured in place, and it therefore never failed to navigate us to our destinations, which included some of the best driving roads in the world. But while it never had problems while docked, the act of docking and undocking turned out to be a bit more of a hassle than I had anticipated. I hadn't expected that I would have to help push the cable in nearly every time to ensure the cable was fully plugged in. And undocking was rather destructive for both the dock and my phone. So after two weeks of intensive testing, I had discovered every single flaw. And now it's time to make one more iteration, the final one that will be absolutely impeccable, because I'll use this contraption every single time I travel by car. Therefore, this design must be as straightforward as it can be. I was getting my hopes back that this project could become a success, because the phone now fits more snug than ever. The main issue with the last iteration was the charging mechanism, mainly because the cable was not attached firmly enough. That's why this time I'm going to use a different type of clips, which sit more flesh against each other, to ensure the cable cannot move even the slightest bit. I set a precise path for the charging cable to follow, and now the only thing left was to design an intuitive way of plugging in and unplugging the cable. Or so I thought. In reality, I spent several more hours building, testing, refining, tweaking details, perfecting the mechanism and removing bulk. But all of that does result in a worthy finished product. It would be so great if I just had a phone without a shattered screen to showcase this final design. And there it is. You slide the phone in from the top, then press the button on the right side to start charging. When you've arrived at your destination, you can undock your phone with one hand by pressing down on the top button with your pinky to disconnect the charging cable. And then it's just a matter of sliding your phone out again. That's how easy it is. I just love how this thing turned out. It is so incredibly minimal, yet so intuitive and it blends in pretty nicely with the rest of my car's dashboard. Also not unimportant, this beautiful solution cost me precisely nothing, because it was all built with unused Lego bricks. So if you happen to have the same problem of not having a convenient way of navigating in your car, then I would encourage you to build something similar with Lego, or go a different route. Try 3D printing, woodworking, or anything really. Don't buy, but build with what you have. Just like how I built a full-sized pool table using only Lego bricks. If this video inspired you, then please go out and inspire someone else. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next build.